To begin in the nation's capital, where President Bola Tinubu has accepted the invitation to meet the U.S. president on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly, the president disclosed this when the U.S. presidential envoy and assistant secretary of state for African affairs, Molefi, visited him and the presidential villa on Saturday. TVC State House correspondent Femi Akondi reports. This meeting was not just about inviting President Bola Tinubu to meet U.S. President Joe Biden at the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. It was also about deepening bilateral ties and strengthening relations that dates back to many decades ago. President Bola Tinubu advised the visiting U.S. presidential envoy to ensure that U.S. policy is intentionally collaborative with independent African democracies at a time when they are under assault by anti-democratic forces within and outside of the continent. The president also pointed out that the American-backed development finance and multilateral institutions, which were designed to support wars on Europe after World War II, requires swift and comprehensive reform to meet the developmental requirements of younger democracies in Africa, which operate in authoritarian, crowded environments such that the legitimate yearnings of Africans would no longer be manipulated to serve the narrow aims of self-seeking demagogues through unconstitutional takeovers of power. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs summarizes what was discussed at the high-powered bilateral meeting. The economy, so business, uh, we're looking at, uh, of course, security concerns. That's the elephant in the room, you know, what's happening in our region, you know, what's happening in Niger, and, um, uh, you know, other things. Uh, the return to um, democracy and normalcy is paramount. The security concerns in the region also very important. Both sides are pleased. Of course, we're going to anger, so there will be uh, sideline meetings there also uh, to continue along the same lines. President Tinubu told his visitor that the crisis in Niger Republic would not deter him from concluding his economic reform program successfully for the benefit of Nigerians and assured that he will only advance the interests of the Nigerian state in the way ECOWAS handles the regional standoff. The U.S. presidential envoy pledged support for the position of ECOWAS and emphasized the high regard the U.S. administration has for the leadership of the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, President Bola Tinubu, and also extended an exclusive invitation from the U.S. president to meet on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York to advance discussions further. Let's turn our attention to the Niger Delta, where the federal government is seeking partnership with local communities to protect the nation's oil and gas infrastructure and asset. National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu made the call when he led other top officials in the sector and service chiefs on an inspection tour of oil pipelines and facilities in River State. Senior correspondent Uche Okoru reports. The National Security Advisor, Minister of State for Petroleum, Minister of Defense, the Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, and the Chiefs of Defense and Air Staff are some of the dignitaries on this high-powered government delegation. They arrived at the Air Force Base in Port Harcourt and proceeded to Okwa West local government area of Abia State. Their mission was to witness firsthand the extent of pipeline vandalism and to assess the performance of the contractor handling security for these critical national assets. Along the route of a pipeline in Owaza community in Abia State, several illegal connections were spotted. The same evidence of criminal activity was seen at Oil Mining Lease 11 in Eche local government area of River State, where the wellhead was vandalized. The government says these acts of sabotage have caused huge economic losses for the country and life-threatening environmental damage to the host communities. We have seen it unbelievable where so much money is spent to build an infrastructure for the common good of all individuals will come in and destroy it. The current government hopes to pick up from where past administrations stopped in the fight against oil theft and artisanal refining of crude. Much of the strategies have depended on anti-vandalism operations of the military and other security agencies. 
But in taking stock of progress made so far, attention is shifting to the role of community members in ending the menace. Please, all of us, let's come to together and say enough is enough. The National Security Advisor and his team say they'll report their findings to President Bola Tinubu, who, according to them, is committed to protecting and maximizing the potentials of the country's oil and gas resources. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Eche. And in Bayasa State's Traditional Rulers Council have raised alarm over plots by some element to stoke violence that could disrupt peace, law and order in Brass, Ekaramo and southern Ijo local government areas. Joseph Kunde has the details. Opunembe has been the subject of media and security attention in Bayelsa State in recent times, which has led to the deployment of a police SWAT team to the community. This development has not gone unnoticed as the Bayelsa State Traditional Rulers Council wades into the matter. Its chairman, King Bubaraye Dakolo, while speaking to journalists, condemned all forms of politically influenced violence as the governorship pools draw closer. The peace which Nimbe had enjoyed for a reasonable while was breached in the most unfortunate manner, creating serious sense of insecurity, panic and fear amongst the people of the town, the local government and the state in general. Looking back at recent historical precedents, it could be inferred that, and rightly so, that the attack on the community is not unconnected with the oncoming November 11 gubernatorial elections in the state. We do not think that law enforcement should allow political actors to violate all the laws of the land and walk away free in the name of politics. The need for various security formations to live up to their billings is highlighted as there are likelihood of the perpetration of similar acts of violence across three other local government areas. We strongly believe that it is time to stop handling the torment tormentors of the Nimbe people with kid gloves. We cannot afford to lose lives every season. There is also a high level of apprehension that there will be outbreak of political, politically orchestrated violence in Southern Niger, Ekerema, and Brass in a short while. If so, this is a call on law enforcement to not only verbally reassure the people of Bielsa State, but ensure that there is no spilling of blood before, during, and after the November 11, 2023 gubernatorial elections. The Traditional Rulers Council also wants all incidents of violence to be properly investigated and suspects brought to book, irrespective of status. Joseph Kunde. TVC News, Yanagua.